Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Commander Cash Shorts and in this one we're going to be doing another deck builder spotlight where I'm going to be talking with various people over the internet and in my local community about the decks that they've constructed so you can get a little bit of insight on their construction methodology, the technology they put behind it, and how these decks play if you were to ever have an interest in maybe replicating one of them. And today my guest is Shives McShivers, aka Jeremiah. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Jeremiah? Um, my name is Jeremiah. Um, I'm an EDH player from Iowa. Uh, I've been playing Magic since about Dark Steel, and uh, mostly just play EDH at this point. Okay, and today we're going to be discussing your slow bad deck. Um, now, this is a bit of an unorthodox general choice. I've never actually seen someone play one before. And I don't even think I've seen someone post a list for it on the internet before I stumbled into you. So how about you run down your choice of the general, why you decided on that, and how this deck kind of evolved from there. Okay. Well, um, I picked slow bad uh, specifically because he's a little bit quirky and uh, he's not played so much. Um, I was in a playgroup that kind of was starting to die because people were getting a little too serious. So I decided to just kind of take it back a notch and build kind of a quirky general. Um, Slow Bad seemed to fit the bill, and uh, with Scars of Mirrodin coming out, uh, there was a lot of cool cards, so I just decided to build it. Okay, now, Slow Bad's obviously not viewed as being a powerhouse general. So what does he provide to this deck? What is he a linchpin, or is he just kind of a nice boost? Did you kind of pick him for the laugh, like... What was the idea behind that? Well, the thing is when you you play EDH, uh, sometimes you pour a lot of mana into something that just really doesn't last that long. Uh, slow bad can kind of just stop that from happening. Uh, he protects pretty much all of your important permanents in the deck. So he, he is a linchpin from that standpoint. Uh, he also combos with a lot of different cards in the deck. Um, things like I'm playing Ward of Bones and Obliterate. So I can kill everybody's lands, keep my Ward of Bones up, and pretty much nobody can play any land after that. Or you've got Slow Bad plus Nevenir's Disc. You just make the disc indestructible, and you can pretty much use it every single turn. Um, That's so, pretty disgusting. Yeah, so, I mean, <laughs> uh, he's pretty powerful in this deck. Uh, he's, uh, you know, the kind of general I like to choose. He's, he's a utility-type general where I can play him a lot of times and, and get some use out of him, so... I just don't like to pour a lot of mana into a big artifact and then just not get to use it, so slow bad stops that. If you were to take a different general and slot it in, do you think the deck would still work? And if so, uh, do you think there's any legendary creature in particular that could do the same thing or maybe at least pile it around the same deck? Sure. Um, you know, the I don't think this particular deck would work with any other general. Um, a lot of the, the cards originally, this came from a Jaya deck that I had built, um, but when they banned Painter Servant, I took the deck apart um, because it just wasn't as good. I really, the way it's built now with the amount of artifacts it has and, it, you know, around Obliterate and that sort of thing, I just don't think you could protect your permanence well enough to, to play any other general, so. Now, what kind of strategy or archetype would you say this deck kind of falls under? Like, is it a control deck, a combo deck, an aggro deck, kind of a, a synthesis of the three, or something else entirely? Well, it can it can kind of go either way. Uh, you can you can get a real uh, big guy out there and just kind of beat down. Um, or there are some some combos in the deck. Uh, you've got Kodatha Forge Master in there, so you can go a lot of different ways uh, with it. Um, also, with uh, I play Bosch and grafted uh, Exoskeleton in there, which means you can poison somebody out very quickly. So there's some combo and some aggro uh, in there, but there's not very much control. So right on. Um, so since we're talking about specific cards while we're at it, why don't we kind of shift gears? Let's look at what your major win conditions are and the, the cards where when you draw them, you feel more confident about winning the game. You're kind of big power cards that make this deck what it is. Sure. Um, well, part of the strength of the deck is that uh, you can just generate a lot of mana. Uh, you've got both gauntlets, a gauntlet of power and gauntlet of might. Uh, you've got extra planar lands because it's a monocolored deck. Uh, Link Moth Urn. Uh, all those cards just generate a ton of mana, so you can do just a you know a ton of different things. Um, obviously, Rings of Bright Hearth, uh, you know, it always does something broken in EDH. Yeah, it's, it's amazing in any my deck. deck. Yeah, so uh, you've got that out there. Um, you know, Never Nero's Disc. I was talking about. Uh, you're pretty much unassailable while you have your general on Never Nero's Disc. So uh, really, the only thing that's going to get you is like a return to dust. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, those are, you know, if you have some way to ramp mana, uh, I also play Koth uh, because I'm playing some Proliferate, things like that. Uh, so it, any one of those thing, ways to make a lot of mana um, is going to make the game go pretty well for you. So I was just actually going to ask you about the Proliferate. Um, so what are the big things, because including Proliferate cards, are, they're kind of corner case right now. Like the, um, the Contagion Engine obviously has a function as it immediately comes into play and puts the minus one, minus one counters on everything. But in EDH, especially in multiplayer, that's not an especially strong effect. So I was sure. kind of wondering what your other reasons were for including those cards. Well, the original reason I had them in the deck is because I was playing Magistrate Scepter, um, but I found that with that and Clock of Omens, I was just kind of getting to take infinite turns a little bit too easily. So I actually just kind of cut it. Um, it stayed in thus far because I have a lot of, uh, you know, different things. I've got grafted exoskeletons, so I can use the, you know, proliferate to poison people out. Um, I've got Koth in there. Um, Lux Cannon. It uh, gets pretty crazy sometimes, uh, especially if you have um, Rings of Bright Hearth plus Contagion Engine going with yeah. Lux Cannon. Uh, you really just kind of go crazy. That's pretty um, awesome. Yeah. And, you know, Serum Tank, there's a lot of just subtle uh, counter effects in there that, that get pretty good. You've got Apenavis, uh, Triskelevis, um, that sort of thing that, that just kind of as they build up and you get like maybe a grafted exoskeleton going on one of them, uh, you can really just get people out of the game pretty fast. So uh, that's kind of why I left it in. Uh, I'm playing Ashling with it as well. Um, oh, that's a pretty rad interaction. Of, yeah. Yeah. So you get a bunch of different little things that are, are kind of cool with it. Um, subtly powerful, but not over the top, I hope. Okay. And, and another card I noticed is Molten Psyche. Uh, Psyche. What, uh, what do you throw that into the deck for? Like, is that, does that combo with something I'm not seeing here, or what? Uh, no, not necessarily, but... Just card selection kind of thing, then? Yeah, I mean, you can you can just really deal some damage with it. Um, oftentimes, because you're making so much mana and you're playing uh, Rato Lantern, um, and, and things like that, uh, you know, discarding your hand, or, or maybe just chaining a, a Wheel of Fortune into a Molten Psyche, can really just, you know, put 14 damage out across the table. You yeah, know? it's a lot of damage in multiplayer. Yeah, um, so that's why it's in there. Uh, because I'm playing things like Platinum Angel and Platinum Empyrean, a lot of times I can just ignore the, you know, some of the global damage and stuff. So, Actually, I noticed that this deck uh, has a lot of Scars of Mirrodin cards in it. Mm -hmm. So um, out of that new set, uh, what would you say were the gems in particular for this deck? Like the, the, the best of the best that you've thrown in here? Because you have a lot of cards from Scars in here, which is surprising because a lot of people have regarded it as a weak set. But I think in EDH it has quite a few bombs, and you've got a lot of the best ones in here. Yeah. Um, Grafted Exoskeleton, you know, is a no-brainer. It's, it's insane in EDH. Uh, it turns Goto into a one-turn kill. Um, it turns Bosch into, you know, pure insanity. Um, you know, a good, another good red card here is uh, the Horde Smelter Dragon. I love uh, that guy. He's actually really good. He's a repeatable effect. You know, so you can kill multiple artifacts a turn with that guy. Um, of course, you've got Seal Hellkite. Um, Amazing. That, yeah, I mean, in, in Mono Red, he does, you know, pretty much everything you want him to do. So, I mean, you know, I think those are the best. Um, obviously, the proliferate stuff can be pretty powerful. Again, uh, it depends on how powerful you want to make it. Uh, I've chosen not to quite go so crazy, but... Um, you know, even with just an ever-flowing chalice, sometimes they're pretty crazy. Yeah, so, it's still good. Yeah. Okay, now, when you're playing this kind of deck, what are the things that make you think, oh, I might be in a trouble spot here when your opponents play them? What are the weaknesses, you would say, both in archetypes, maybe, and in specific strategies or cards that might make you feel a little less confident about playing it? Well, sometimes uh, you're going to get against somebody that's really aggressive early. Um, those are the kind of decks that it are going to give you some trouble. Uh, you know, you can start to snowball in the middle of the game pretty well and uh, get to a point where basically nobody can attack you. Um, you know, you can get something like a bottled cloister with ensnaring bridge, so you never have any cards in your hand uh, during other people's turns, and they can never actually attack you. Um, but early, if you get a, like an early general damage deck, uh, something like an Isamaru or um, something like that coming after you early in the game, 
that's when you get in the most trouble. Um, also, sometimes you get into you know some some crazy combo type decks. I mean, you don't have a lot of action on other people's turns, so uh, you know if if somebody's going to really cast a lot of spells and, and combo out on their turn, you're going to be sitting there watching and hope there's a blue player at the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and the other thing I wanted to ask is, you mentioned that you've actually taken this deck and how should I say, uh, you've taken some of the, the Venom out of it from the original build. You'd say it's not quite as powerful as it originally is? Is that how you'd term it? Um, I would say, I don't think the power level is lower, but uh, it takes a little more skill to play now, I guess. Okay. Um, if, if, you, if you were to optimize this deck to be as competitive as possible, what would you think would be the cards to put in it? Well, if you were just thinking to win every single game as fast as possible, what would you want to throw in this deck? Well, I would... Uh, I guess I, I would definitely add back the Magistrate Scepter. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it's just... It's ridiculous. It's it's so easy to go infinite with. Um, you know, honestly, uh, you would want to maybe just build the deck a little bit more around Forge Master. Uh, that card is just absolutely insane. Uh, this is... You know, tap him, sack three artifacts, search your uh, your library for an artifact and put it directly into play. Uh, you get that thing going with um, Rings of Bright Hearth, and you combo really fast with almost any artifact combo you can find. Yeah, that's so, pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it's it gets pretty nuts. Um, you know, right now, you can get like a, a mere battle sphere out with uh, Kark Clan Ironworks and uh, Rings of Bright Hearth, and you can just go crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. So you can just pretty much get every artifact out of your deck, just put it right in the play and win. So um, I think one card it's missing, if you really wanted to go that route, is a Chroma's Memorial. Um, uh, you know, that the, would the be pretty awesome. Pretty uh, and you can kill pretty much the whole table in one turn that way. Yeah, so. no doubt. Okay, awesome. Uh, so, yeah, thanks for giving us the time, Jeremiah. Uh, appreciate it. And it's just kind of cool to take a look at a deck that's this offbeat, uh, as opposed to what you normally see in, even in Mono Red. This is uh, a... <laughs> It's a pretty cool approach. So I just want to thank you for your time. Just want to remind everyone at http commandercast.blogspot.com we're going to have more of these deck builder spotlights coming out in the near future. Uh, So once more, thanks a lot for giving us the time of day, Jeremiah. We appreciate it. And uh, do you have anything you'd like to say to everybody out there that might be listening? Uh, I think that's it.